Good morning everyone and welcome as we come together on this beautiful Sunday morning. I'm outside again this morning as you can tell. A bit cool, a bit breezy, but today's been so beautiful I just thought that this would be a, a good place to be today. And so we just welcome you as we come together. Um, just want to remind everybody that we are still planning to be together next Sunday on May 17th um, to come together for our first worship service as we return as the body of Christ physically being together and I will get with you later in the week and um, let you know exactly how that's going to look maybe and um, kind of give you some details as we get closer to that time. We will continue as we go back into uh, worship. We will continue to play our videos on Sunday. Um, they may play in the afternoon after the worship service. It just depends on how technology and I get along this next week. I know how to do it as we're doing it now and so I can promise you that we can record it and play it later if possible. I would like to be able to um, be able to do it live. So just some things to work through this week as we go forward. I want to continue to thank you for your efforts as we support Community for Christ. The um, volume of food that has been turned into the church has has been great and um, I'd like to thank Herb and Joyce Keck for making sure that that food is taken to Community for Christ along with your financial donations as we continue to help them as they help the community. Still a lot of need that goes on in our world each and every day and so um, and also for your generous contributions that continue to come into the church to support the church to support our outreach and the ministries um, that we reach out and support financially. Um, medical missions for Christ and the different food banks and things that we do support. And so I thank you for all of that because it is important to continue even as we're separated physically to be the church and we have shown I think as we've gone through this that we are Christ's body, we are God's people, we are the church. And so we come today celebrating Mother's Day and I know for some that's a glorious thing. Uh, you had great mothers and I know for others it's also a time that is um, very tough perhaps because motherhood was never part of, of um, your life even though you desired that and so as we come today to celebrate we'll celebrate the gift that of life that mothers give and you know I'm very blessed my brothers and I that we still have our mom she's 91 she lives here close in the care center though I haven't seen her for several months I know she's well and so I'm just thankful for that I give God thanks for that and for the life that he gave me through her and I guess maybe I owe her some kind of a trophy, you know, at 11 pounds, 4 ounces. Um, I probably do owe her a trophy. I, but I tell her, I know how she, that she loves me. I tell her all the time how much she loves me. So we've got that all figured out. And I finally, um, it took me a long time, but I finally figured out why my mom walks by and slaps me on my birthday. So I just celebrate my mom today as you celebrate yours and you remember your moms. and those ladies who played the role of motherhood, whether it was as your mother um, in that particular role or just as they mothered us through life in those situations that we we go through. So, life. Life and death. Those are the bookmarks in which we live. Birth and death. What's life in between? What does that look like? Who are we? Why are we? You know, as we read the scripture today, it's from John chapter 14, and it goes back when Jesus was with the disciples on that last night before his death. And so, though we've celebrated Easter and the resurrection, and we've moved forward, we're now going to step back a minute. And in that scripture, it talks about Jesus preparing a place. And so I will read that for you this morning, starting at... Chapter 14, verse 1. It says, Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. There is more than enough room in my Father's home. If this were not so, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? When everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am. And you know the way where I am going. No, we don't, Lord, Thomas said. We have no idea where you're going, so how can we know the way? And Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. 
If you had really known me, you would know who my father is. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. And Philip said, Lord, show us the father and we will be satisfied. And Jesus replied, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and yet you still don't know who I am? Anyone who has seen me has seen the father. So why are you asking me to show him to you? Don't you believe that I am the Father, and the Father is in me? The words I speak are not my own, but my Father who lives in me does his work through me. Just believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or at least believe because of the work you have seen me do. I tell you the truth, anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done, and even greater works, because I am going to be with the Father. You can ask for anything in my name, and I will do it so that the Son can bring glory to the Father. Yes, ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. The Word of the Lord. You know, that scripture is one that you hear read many times at funerals, and I use it myself quite often. I used it, uh, matter of fact, this week. Because it is a promise that Christ is going to prepare a place for us with His Father, with our Father, with the Lord our God. And so we look at that as our hope in the eternity and the place that we will spend life after death. But as I think about that, I think about the fact that we witness Jesus' death each year and then we celebrate the resurrection. What do we do with this scripture? Do we just hang it out somewhere and leave that out there until it's time for a funeral, until death comes and speaks with us? Is that all that scripture is about. And I think the answer to that for me is no. As I, as I read that this week again and again, it began to remind me that Jesus' ascension to the Father and His being God and allowing us to see God through Him has to be so much more than just a promise of life after death. It has to be a promise of life now. And so as I was thinking about that, I was thinking about Thomas saying, you know, Lord, we don't know where you're going. And then Peter saying, show us who God is. Show us the Father. And at that time, there was probably an audible gasp in the room from the rest of the disciples because every Jew knew from Scripture that you could not look at God. You could not see God. If you remember the story of Moses, you know, God turned Moses' face into the cleft of the mountain and passed by and his glory was so great that all Moses saw was the trailing of God's backside as he moved through. That God is more than we can look upon in his greatness. But yet, because of Christ and through Christ, we're able to be and to see who God is. To be in relationship. To hear God's call in our lives. To be a part of that plan. And so as Jesus is talking to his disciples, he's saying, I'm going to go prepare this place for you. And because of me, because you have seen me, you have seen the Father. And in that Father, my Father's house, there's plenty of room for everyone. Plenty of room for everyone. And I think about all those times in life when we have to step in to those rooms, when we need those places to abide with the Lord. We need that place to just find shelter. And I think that's why for me that scripture is as much about life today as it is about life eternity. My hope is in the eternity. My promise comes through Christ in the eternity. That because of Him and my sins have been cleansed, I am forgiven of those things that make me broken and human. And God finds favor in me. But yet we go through life, and we've talked over and over, I talk about the valleys because I think one of the greatest misconceptions that there is is folks think because of a relationship in Christ that nothing's ever going to go wrong in your life. And I don't know how that works out for everybody, but for me it just doesn't seem to work out that my life's perfect because of my relationship with Christ. And nowhere through the Gospels does Christ, Christ tell you that. He tells you over and over, you know, you'll be persecuted because of your relationship with me. And... He knows those struggles that we were going to have. And I think the resurrection and that moment when God shows His power over death and He brings Christ back to life and Christ ascends to the Father. In 
all of that, that gives us what we need to go through everyday life. That gives us what we need each and every moment. Moments when our hearts hurt because of the challenge of motherhood, the challenge of broken relationships, the challenge we face with health issues, financial issues, so many things. We've talked about the list and the list is long. The list goes on and on and on and on. But the difference is whether we choose to go through those things with the Lord at our side, abiding in those rooms that he talks about, that space that he talks about. You know, all through his gospel, the gospels, Jesus talks about bringing his Father's kingdom. Thy will be done. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And so that kingdom, he talks about bringing it here so that we reside in that now. And what that looks like for us is that even though we go through the struggles of life, even though we go through everyday challenges, even though we're asked to stay home because something like the coronavirus, whether you accept it or don't accept it or whatever that is, those struggles that we have, there's a promise in that. There's a promise that because of Christ, because of knowing Christ, that there is a place for us. That there is a place for us in the Father's kingdom and that we are part of that kingdom. And with that comes God's grace and mercy and unconditional love. It comes peace. It comes with strength. And so we find ways to make it through each and every day. And we go through those struggles, we go through those ups and those downs, those moments when we celebrate, those moments when we cry. But yet we do all of that understanding that Christ has prepared a place for us and that place is in the, in the kingdom, as part of the kingdom. Abiding in His presence always. And because of that, we're promised that life goes on. Even when we get to that bookmark of death that says this physical life is over for you your body is done, you take your last breath. And it's because of that that we as Christians celebrate with funeral, that we come together to celebrate life, to acknowledge that we have the gift of the eternity through Christ. And so all of that comes together from the time we're born to we make that decision and we, we move forward with Christ as part of our life, understanding that death is only a marker. For us it's not the end. And so as I went through this week and we acknowledge death, but yet I acknowledge the gift of life that's so precious. God's gift. And what we make of it each day is up to each one of us. How we live it each day is up to each one of us. Do we live it in the manner in which Christ taught us? Do we learn to forgive? Do we learn to accept? Do we learn to look beyond color of skin, differences in our political opinions, so many things that make us different, make us who we are as God's people. Do we live and abide in the kingdom? Or is the kingdom just something that we set aside and think, well, I'll be a part of that and when I die? I don't have to be a part of that now. I think Jesus promised to his disciples was that he would always be with them. Always there to be at their beck and call. And he said, ask me anything. You know, oftentimes we ask those things of God and we don't get the answers that we want. We have a image of God waving his magic wand and taking care of life so that it looks like we want it to look. But most of the time when we're in control and we're in charge, it doesn't work out, at least for me. And so we ask those things, even those questions like Thomas and, and Peter asked, those things that make us unsure. We ask those things of Christ. 
and we trust that he'll answer so that our hearts will be at peace. Life is good. Life is good in Christ. I hope your week is good. I hope you're in Christ's peace this week. It was as he was with his disciples before his death that he shared this with them. It was also at that time that he shared a meal. He took a loaf of bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to him and said, take it eat. At the end of that meal, he took a cup. And after giving thanks, he said, this is a new, the everlasting covenant in my blood poured out for many for the forgiveness of sin. Drink of this all of you in remembrance of me. Would you pray with me? Most gracious and holy God, as we come together today, there's so much that goes on in our lives. We struggle through this virus and to understand our role in it, to know what's right, to know how to approach it. But yet, so much goes on in our world that we've ignored, that this is blanketed. And people still hurt and people still starve and go without fresh water. Relationships are still broken. Addictions are still real. And so we just lift up all of these things to you, Lord. We pray for your world. We pray that your world may be healed. We pray that our nation might find a way to come together. We pray for our leaders that they would make good decisions, decisions that are worthy and glorify you. We pray for each one who is working so hard in the healthcare industry. Those who are on the front lines working to care for people. We pray for those who are trying to get their businesses back on track. We pray for each one who is struggling to decide what is right for them moving forward. To stay in their homes or to be out and about. We pray for mothers. For the gift that they give through life the gift of motherhood from those who got it right. We pray for those who struggled with it. We pray for those who have a desire to be mothers but struggle with that also. Lord, we just lift them into your care. Lord, just help us as we go through this week to know that you are with us in all things. Help us to understand that it's okay to question and to ask, but to be with you as we do that be in your presence to understand that relationship that you offer us. Father, your world is so good. Even in the brokenness of life and all those things that come that we have created upon our own doing, your world is so good. Life is a wonderful thing. And we give you thanks for that. May we glorify you in all we do this week as we go about our ways. We ask your protection upon us as we begin to come together. As we work out what that looks like. And define how it is that we go forward in the days ahead. We love you and praise you. We pray now the prayer that Christ taught his disciples. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Life can have its challenges. But when we go through life 
abiding with Christ. Living in that space that He has prepared for us. A place that He calls us to. There's a peace that comes with that. There's a sweetness that comes with that. And there's an understanding that when we reach the end of this life, that the best is yet to come. Hope you have a great week. I love you. Take care of yourself. We look forward to seeing you soon.